Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White, and in this video we're going to begin thinking about volcanoes and volcanic hazards. So the first thing we need to deal with is what is a volcano and what is not a volcano. So this is going to correspond to section 6.1 of your textbook. So volcanoes form where we have magma exiting the subsurface and being erupted onto the surface of the earth. And of course that can either be the surfaces in the continents or it can be the surfaces in the seafloor. So a volcano essentially forms where we have magma venting onto the earth's surface. And of course this is going to lead to a buildup of material around that vent. Now the point where the magma is venting onto the earth's surface is often marked out by something which we refer to as a crater. So a crater is simply going to be a depression um, in your volcano and it's going to mark the position of the vent through which the volcanic material is exiting. Now, in terms of the material that gets erupted by volcanoes, it comes in two forms. We can have material leaving the volcano in the form of lava. So essentially, as you can see in this picture here, you can quite clearly see a lava flow there. And of course, that is essentially a ribbon of liquid rock. We can also have pyroclastic material, of which the vast majority will be ash. And if you remember, this material is formed by small pieces of magma that get thrown up into the air as the volcano is erupting. And these small particles of magma will cool and solidify in the air where they'll form little particles, which we call ash particles. Now, obviously, the eruption of all this volcanic material is going to mean that these extrusive igneous rocks are going to build up around the volcanic vent. And this means in a lot of cases, we're going to have this buildup of material producing a hill or a mountain. So it's not uncommon for volcanoes to form topographic highs. Now, the model that I was talking about here was uh, suggesting that we have a vent that's essentially a single point on the surface of the Earth through which magma is exiting. But there's also a second type of volcanic eruption which are referred to as fissure eruptions. And in this instance, instead of there being one centralized location through which the magma is exiting, we actually have a fissure, so a crack, on the surface of the earth. And as you can see from this image, the magma is exiting onto the surface of the earth using this crack. Now, in this case, because the material is being extruded over a large area, it's, it means what we're going to end up with is, is quite a flat, broad volcano. In contrast to a volcano like this one here, where we have one central vent, and all the material is essentially piling up around that one vent, leading to the formation of our hill or mountain. So in this instance, we're not going to see a big, tall volcano, because the lava is being extruded over quite a large area, rather than around one central vent. So in this instance we're going to think about what you know we would classify as a volcano and what we would not. So you can see in this instance we have ourselves a fissure eruption. So you can see the crack, the fissure on the surface of the earth marked out here in yellow. And so this is the point where the lava is exiting onto the surface of the earth. So this is this is our volcanic fissure. Now you will notice that the lava that's being extruded is spreading out over the surrounding area and we can see it as this lava flow which has this black colour. Now over time what's going to happen is eventually the, the volcano will become extinct. So uh, lava will stop exiting onto the surface of the earth and any, you know, any, any lava or magma that's still present will cool and solidify and become solid rock. So we can see in this second image that obviously we have the fissure itself picked out here as this dike. And you can still see we have the lava flow right there. Now this area directly around the lava flow is technically going to be our volcano because that's the point where the lava was exiting onto the surface of the earth. Now the thing is, is over time what you'll notice is the area which was the volcano has now been completely eroded away. So the volcano itself is now gone. What we have in its, well, what we have left, should I say, is this area over here where we can see these dark volcanic rocks at the top, which are going to be quite hard. So they're going to be a bit more difficult to erode. And so what ends up happening is they end up protecting the softer sedimentary rocks beneath them. And because they get protect, you know, because these sedimentary rocks get protection, they get eroded more slowly. And so they end up forming a topographic high.
The most important thing to remember is that these rocks that we can see here, therefore, are not part of the volcano. They're part of the lava flows that came from the volcano, but they're not actually rocks that were produced around the volcanic vent itself. So we don't actually consider them to be part of the volcano. So this means when you see extrusive igneous rocks in your sequence of, you know, in your sequence of rocks, it doesn't necessarily mean that what you're looking at is a volcano. It could just be a lava flow that spread a very, very long way from the volcanic vent. So these rocks here would not not be considered part of the volcano, they would just be considered part of a lava flow. And we can see that exact situation in this instance here. So here we have what's referred to as a mesa. And you can see on the top here, we have this uh, layer of dark colored volcanic rock, which is very, very hard. It's difficult to erode. Uh, in contrast, the sedimentary rocks which are around it are much softer and so they'll erode a lot faster. And so what's happened is, is the volcanic rocks here have offered protection to the sedimentary rocks below. Therefore, they have been more difficult to erode. And so over time, the surrounding sedimentary rocks have been eroded away. But the area which is covered by the extrusive igneous rocks is protected and therefore it ends up forming a topographic high. But once again, this this situation that we can see here is not actually the volcano. It's just a lava flow that's come from a volcano. So we do need to be clear in our distinctions. The volcano itself is just the area surrounding the volcanic vent. The lava flows produced by that volcano can end up spreading out over a large area. So the next thing you need to think about are what are the main types of volcanoes? Well, the first type of volcano we're going to look at is something which is referred to as a scoria cone volcano. So scoria cone volcanoes tend to be relatively small by volcano standards, and they'll often be a few hundred meters in height. So they're not that tall and they're not that wide. You can see though they do have quite steep slopes. Now scoria cones are created around uh, volcanic vents which are extruding mafic lava. And this mafic lava is uh, very, very vesiculous. There's lots of gas bubbles in it. And this produces a type of rock, which is a very highly vesicular mafic volcanic rock, which we call scoria. So when the eruption is taking place, these little lumps of scoria get thrown up into the air. So they exit the volcanic vent, they get thrown up into the atmosphere and they fall down and they pile up on the sides of the volcanic vent, forming our scoria cone. You will notice that sometimes the, volcan the lava flows actually manage to break out and you'll see in this case the scoria gets thrown out of the crater at the top of the volcano. So that's these, these fist sized lumps of rock get thrown up into the air and they fall back onto the side of the volcano. The lava flow on the other hand you can see here is actually broken out along the bottom of the volcano, so down here. So you'll notice this lava flow hasn't come from the crater, it's actually formed along the bottom edge of the volcano, which obviously you can't see because it's on the other side of the image. So that's going to be a scoria cone volcano. Now the other type of volcano which is associated with mafic lavas is a shield volcano. So in the case of a shield volcano, we have large quantities of mafic lava exiting onto the surface of the earth. Now we know already that mafic lavas are quite uh, low viscosity, so they'll flow very, very easily. And so this means these mafic lavas will flow out over quite a large area. And so these shield volcanoes, by volcano standards, aren't going to be very, very high, but they are going to be very, very wide. They're going to have a large lateral extent. And that's because the lava can flow over very large distances. And so we can see that here. So here is our volcano. So our, our main volcanic vent is probably going to be somewhere towards the top here. And you can see this is the side of the volcano here. And you can see just how huge this thing is. But by volcano standards, given the width of it, it's not actually that high. So the next type of volcano we'll be looking at is something which is referred to as a composite volcano. And these are typically uh, associated with the eruption of intermediate lavas. Now, there's a couple of things you need to remember. As we move from mafic through intermediate to felsic, we know the viscosity of our lava is increasing. So a felsic lava is going to be more viscous than a mafic lava. It's going to be stickier. 
And so this means when an intermediate lava gets erupted onto the surface of the Earth, it's not going to be able to flow as far as a mafic lava because the, the intermediate lava is just more viscous, it's stickier. And so this means the lava flows will begin to pile up closer to the volcanic vent. Also, because intermediate magmas, intermediate lavas, have a higher volatile content, so they've got more gas dissolved in them, it means it's more likely that the volcanic eruptions associated with intermediate um, lavas will be explosive. So there'll be, uh, there'll be explosions as part of the eruption, which will produce pyroclastic material. So in the case of composite cone volcanoes, what we have is we have a situation where it goes, we have a lava flow that gets covered by pyroclastic material. Then the volcano erupts again, we get another lava flow, another layer of pyroclastic material. Then the volcano erupts again, another lava flow, another layer of pyroclastic material. So you can see our composite volcano has this rather distinct layered structure to it, which consists of alternating layers of lava flows and pyroclastic rocks. Now, you'll notice that because the material is piling up pretty close to the vent, what we have is a volcano that is very, very tall. And so it's not uncommon for composite volcanoes to form mountains or at least very, very large hills. Uh, in contrast, the next type of volcano is called a volcanic dome. And volcanic domes typically form from felsic lavas. So this is the most viscous of all the lavas. They're the stickiest. And so this means, number one, it's actually quite difficult to extrude this lava onto the surface of the Earth because it's very, very sticky. It doesn't move through the crust very easily. And so this means you're not going to get huge amounts of it actually being extruded. So typically volcanic domes are actually quite small. They'll typically only be a few hundred meters high and maybe only a few hundred meters wide. So by volcano standards, pretty tiny. Now, as we've discussed, the lava itself is going to be very, very viscous, it's going to be very sticky, and so it's not going to be able to flow very far, and so it's going to pile up around the volcanic vent itself, and so we're going to end up with this volcano that has a very small lateral extent, it's not very wide. But also, because it is piling up, it does mean it's going to be relatively tall, so you can expect to have quite steep sides. So in this image, we can see a volcanic dome right here. So this is actually in the crater of Mount St. Helens. So Mount St. Helens is actually a composite volcano, but up here in the crater at the top, a small volcanic dome has formed from the extrusion of, extrusion of uh, felsic lavas, and it's produced this feature, which we can see right here. We can actually see an older volcanic dome right there. Now, one of the things about volcanic domes is because the lava is so sticky, so it doesn't flow very, very far, but it has a very, very high volatile content. It's not uncommon for the uh, very gas rich lavas to get trapped in the volcano where the gases start to come out. And obviously that means there's a big volume expansion. So it's not uncommon for volcanic domes to actually blow themselves up and destroy themselves. And we'll be covering this in greater detail in a future presentation. Okay, thank you for watching everybody and have a good day.